Okay guys and welcome to the next part of my hot rod tutorial. As I mentioned in the previous one, high poly is finished, so what we'll be doing now is um, working on the low poly. Um, you just saw me hide all the high poly objects here. And the first real low poly object we're going to tackle is uh, the main body. Um, I've got this sort of mid poly uh, body that I created beforehand. What I'm doing now is I'm going to uh, tweak the vertices so that they match the uh, high poly body as close as possible. The reason you do this is uh, when you're baking your normals uh, you want them to match as close as possible since uh, it results in better normals. Uh, I'm also spreading the verts a little bit. There we go. Something like that. And what I'm mostly looking for is so that I get these sort of um, you can see them here and there, these circular patterns in the middle of polygons, that means I'm getting the best coverage out of them, sort of 50% inside, 50% outside, that's uh, the sort of coverage I'm going for. Uh, moving these points down a little bit, you also, at the beginning of the video, you might have seen me um, remove the double edge that was uh, at the, uh, the top of the of the mid poly mesh. Reason for that is I've modeled it in high poly, and my normal maps will uh, will have that show up. There's no reason to model it in uh, the low poly. One thing I do want to model is um, the that sort of uh, bulge at the front. I'm not sure how to call that because uh, it's never going to look good on uh, on normal maps if I leave it uh, entirely flat. So I'm just adding it like that. Uh, this one needs to be chamfered a little bit more. Thinking about what the normals will be able to compensate for and what they won't be able to to fix. And uh, of course, you can see I created the transmission tunnel here. Um, I'm gonna have to model that as a low poly as well. Something like that. Yep. Preparing the shape. And then I'm just going to uh, extrude that part, delete these, and I'm going to use target weld on edge level to uh, weld those into each other. Now this is a bit tricky because it's hard to see what I'm exactly working with. I want to move these like that. One thing's for sure, I don't want to spend too much polygons on this, uh, this part. It's just not worth it. Accidentally moved over the wrong angle there, the uh, wrong axis. Oh, that's better. See, this is kind of tricky to get right, but uh, luckily it's a part that you won't be seeing so much of, so um, it's not that much of a problem. Yeah, and what I did here was I created a chamfer on the outside, but I had it um, end in a triangle in the middle, because at the bottom in the middle there, Really, if it's going to be covered by the transmission, you won't be able to see it. Just not worth putting polygons in there. But at the front, um, turning an arch into, uh, well, dividing it by just two segments, that's not enough. That's why I added another chamfer there to make things look better. What I'm doing here is I want um, this edge to be completely perpendicular to uh, the, the edge of the car. So I'm using an extrude on edges and the advantage of that is it, it tends to uh, extrude over a normal that is exactly 90 degrees on the um, the base edge. It's still not perfect but it's easy to use. Doing the same thing here, tweaking these to get them in the correct position. Yeah, it's not... It's, it's hard to tell what the normal maps will react like here. Uh, I need to move these down a little bit. One thing you really need to remember is your low poly can be inside as well as outside of the high poly. Uh, really, you want to have a balance in between them. If you have your uh, low poly completely enclosing the high poly, that's really not a good thing. Um, it's got to be in between. People might mix up the requirements for the, uh, the cage and the actual low poly. 
I'm just trying to get these to sit on the surface uh, as much as possible. This really is just tweaking. Uh, and you can see here, this is a little bit of a tricky part, probably the trickiest part of the entire um, body mesh. Uh, the thing is, there's a sort of intersection between the cushions on the side of the car and the dashboard and the door, and um, especially for baking, it's going to be tricky. So I have to make sure that my uh, my low pulley there is modeled decently. Uh, and we'll get back to to some some things to pay attention to uh, that apply to that part later. Next thing I'm doing is another extrusion. Yep, there we go. Negative. It's a bit tricky to get right. You can you can see me wrestling with it. I'm not really getting it to uh, to do what I want exactly. But anyway, this is a start, and now I just manually select these parts, and uh, I'm gonna start tweaking. So what I want to do here is get that curve right. And one thing you might be noticing is um, I modeled the outside of the car, which will be um, glossy paint. I modeled that as one one part, while the uh, inside of the car, the, the cushions and everything, that's a separate object in my high pulley. I'm not doing that in my low pulley, and reason for that is it just makes things easier to bake. Um, I mentioned it here for the first time. It's way easier to bake one single object than it is to bake a lot of separate objects because you have to get every separate one of them uh, to look just right. So that's the reason I, I try to keep uh, things as one solid, not exactly watertight, but uh, connected mesh for baking purposes. You'll hear me mention that uh, more later on. That's looking about right. Notice how I'm keeping uh, pretty much the same pulley flow. The reason for that is it's just it's the most logical thing to do to have it flow along uh, the lines of the seats. And yeah, there's some tweaking involved here. Especially with these rounded shapes, it can be hard to uh, well, it can take take quite some some work to get it just right. Also, the positive thing is you might be guessing this already, but uh, all those little um, bulges and that detail in the cushions on the side of the car, of course, that will be normal maps. I won't be spending any time modeling that uh, in the low poly, obviously. And there's a little bit of a problem here. See? Meshes intersecting through each other. Um, <laughs> apparently I've, I've messed up a little bit here. I told you it's a tricky area. Go weld those together. We'll see what it gives later. Okay, now so... Uh, Instead of using the extrude, I'm just going to move these manually. It's just a lot easier to do. And this one seems to be a little bit too low. And I've selected a polygon that I sh uh, vertex that I shouldn't have selected. Always something to watch out for, right? When you're modeling, don't select verts um, behind the ones you're drawing a selection uh, rectangle around. Then you start moving stuff you don't want, you have to pay attention to that. Okay, so I'm going to weld these, and I want to make sure that my uh, my wire lines up with the edge of that uh, the seat of the car. And 
and I'm just extruding these so that I can connect them with um, the other parts of the seat. Let me go using target weld since that's just easy. There we go. I use a line on the um, x axis to make sure they're all straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a little bevel on the side of the um, of the seat here. You might think, oh, I could do that as a 90 degree angle. Mm, it's just going to be better if I have a little uh, beveled edge there. And these can just be uh, extruded down. Same here. And to keep my wire optimized, I'm going to cut from here to that part. Yeah, and of course, uh, that part's gone a little bit messy. There. I used connect between two verts and then deleted it. So that's what it's supposed to look like. So you see, I'm really, I'm connecting all separate parts together here so uh, that my baking just becomes a lot less of a headache for me. I could optimize that a little bit more. Maybe I'm going to do that. Um, I'll see. Yeah, and what I can do now is start creating the uh, rest of the interior. The tough part will be near the dashboard. Uh, I'm going to have some trouble with that probably. And I'm using the verts and geometry I have to uh, line up. Since I'm working with normal maps, I don't have to think all that much about smoothing. I have to do it a bit though, but uh, not in the way that in these places that you won't see so well my my polyflow has to be uh, the best ever. It's just not required anyway. Um, so yeah, there we go. Move that down a little bit. So I have to make sure that um, when I'm modeling the top of this uh, transmission tunnel, it shouldn't uh, protrude into the, the bottom here. They have to sit uh, around each other. Yeah, I'm moving these a little bit more. And simply closing that up. That's just some tweaking. Same deal as we've done before, getting it to match the, uh, the high poly. And to be honest, you. I'm not spending too much tweak work in this location uh, simply because as I mentioned before you really won't see too much of this area I mean it's there you'll see it in some screenshots if I'm looking from the back from the top yeah but other than that it could just as well be wasted work that maybe one person will ever notice so uh, that's why I'm keeping it low profile And just a tip for if you're modeling interiors for a car, a simple thing, I always find it tricky too, but what works for me is just using this shift extrude and patching everything up, creating a, an enclosed um, surface for the interior. Just go around, close, weld, uh, shape everything together. In this case, I'd already made my uh, my high poly interior, which means I just have to match it. And the high poly interior was separate objects also. It's a bit of a different workflow. I learned doing this with, with cars where I didn't um, model any high poly. And then it can get really tedious and, and difficult to uh, to understand how to do an interior. But 
really it's not that difficult uh, the toughest part is just getting everything to line up and, and, and uh, close off the entire interior so anyway you see me uh, moving some more edges on the top here um, yes I'm gonna select some of these because well I don't need them and I'm using shift move to get those into the uh, correct position my dashboard will probably be completely flat so uh, the normal maps will do most of that surface detail in there the gorges I will model because well, you simply can't get that convincingly out of the uh, the normal map but that little beveled edge uh, around well, that trim around the dashboard pff, not worth it like that just getting it to match nicely using extrude again since as I said it's uh, perpendicular to the surface they are attached to which is always really easy because if you have to do it manually it can get tricky yeah and here I did I simply did a uh, a bridge between them moving them a little bit so the polygons are spread more evenly but it's not that important and let's see here I'm just thinking how I should handle that difficult corner here really trickiest part of them all I need to think about baking and having stuff not intersect too much and both really <laughs> not all that fun and since these meshes are intersecting I figure then I'm just gonna attach my uh, my low poly together there too because it's just gonna be easier since if you have to bake intersecting high poly meshes then pff, and I just don't want to go back to tweaking my high poly uh, looks fine as it is so don't need to put more work in that and I'm thinking here what I should do to change this uh, and something's wrong there apparently this one needs to be welded still giving me trouble yeah there we go that's better okay this seems patched up now not the cleanest part but hey normal maps will fix a lot of it and yeah I had a little uh, chamfer there because well that part would be quite visible since it's at the corner if you look from the back you'll probably see it so I want the silhouette to be nice adding some more chamfers so that it works out and let's see here these move them a little bit more and these positions need a little bit of tweaking uh, this seems to be better Right, I think most of the low poly for the uh, for the body is done now. Just hide everything and looking at it like this. Yeah, that looks okay. Oh, there's a hole here. Uh, I pretty much forgot about that because uh, the high poly was in the way. Forgot to weld a little bit. And I'm thinking about how I will fix this another problem there really need to be careful with these difficult areas I'm I have I have experience modeling this sort of stuff and still I end up with double vertices and unwelded parts and whatever really need to double check that uh, that stuff to make sure you don't end up with nasty problems that cause a lot more grief later than uh, you you'd like them to
and I'm gonna cap these since that's probably the easiest to do. Oh yeah, and obviously I can't forget about uh, about the seat here. And bridge these. Weld those over there. I'm doing some extreme optimizations now uh, because, well, as I said, normal map will do it for me. Oh, these well efforts aren't welded. There we go. Water is really a good way to check if you have uh, closed edges where needed. Mm. Oh yeah, the front here, I need to fix that up too. There we go. It's looking better. can optimize these. That looks better too. Tweak the wire at the bottom a bit more. Yeah. Okay, I don't think I can take this much further. You'll notice that the transmission tunnel on the inside is quite blocky, but since it's such a vague shape that you'll never see in silhouette, I can get away with making it so uh, so undefined. So. Next up, assigning smoothing groups. First time we're doing this, um, extremely important uh, for baking normal maps. The rule I follow pretty much is uh, if there's going to be a UV seam, so in max one of those green lines in between them, then I assign a separate smoothing group. So uh, hard split edges equal uh, UV seams. And um, also, you might, I might be able to leave some of these parts attached in UVs, but if the um, angle in the model between them is too big, like nearing 90 degrees or more, even 60 can be a problem already, it depends, then I uh, assign a smoothing, group split, a smoothing group split, and I will also assign a UV split there. So there we go. That means I'm going to detach the seat. Um, yeah, this one's a, this one's a tricky one. You might say, yeah, I could leave that uh, loop around around that bulge as one piece. Uh, sure, I could do that, but it's going to give me a lot of problems with a normal map. So instead, you see, I'm assigning a smoothing group split there. So basically, you're actually assigning the smoothing groups as you would with a low poly model that doesn't have normal maps. But when you're unwrapping, you're going to have to add uh, UV seams there as well. Um, you'll see that when I get to unwrapping, and it'll all make sense. But if I wouldn't do this, then I would get quite severe um, smoothing problems with the normal map. The reason for that is an entire different discussion. is because Max doesn't really bake normal maps 100% correct. But um, we have to work with what we got and work around it. So next up for creating a low poly, the uh, front grill or grille. Um, I used the mid poly model for that. Optimize it a little bit, but not too much work in there. Yeah, so another one is the, uh, the fuel tank at the back. And so you see, most of the time I just start from my mid poly models and optimize them a little bit. Yeah, these need to be tweaked a little bit more, make them a bit thinner. Three sides, since they're so thin, you'll never see uh, you'll never see any more sides. Oh, and we have a little bit of a problem with my wheels here. Looks like the center hubcap is misaligned. Um, I'm just gonna remake it. So uh, I'm actually starting the uh, the low poly here, and probably don't need that extra loop there. Might delete that later. Um. Uh, 
Let's see if I can do some more work here. Can't really see anything at the moment. Uh, most of these mid poly parts are already usable as uh, as low polys, and some of them, like the front suspension system, I modeled with low poly in mind. Since uh, at a certain stage, I was thinking, I'm not going to bake these, but I will end up doing it eventually. You'll you'll see that in uh, in later videos. Yeah, obviously, I need some sort of uh, attachments for the fuel tank. So I'm adding these little parts here. This can be quite a tedious part. Um, I kind of loathe this as well. Just creating the stupid details, like these boxes to attach things together. You need to create them. It's not fun, but hey, it's part of the job. Okay, so we have here 8,742 polygons. That's okay. Still don't have the engine yet. Uh, I think I'm, maybe I have to go for the uh, the window next. Yeah, and of course smoothing groups here. Can't forget that. So uh, the supports for the window, I've duplicated them. Uh, and there's a little bit of a problem here. The problem is that at that specific location, my low pulley wasn't uh, completely flush with the high pulley, so that resulted in uh, <laughs> the the window brackets sitting completely inside the body of the car. So it needs a little bit more tweaking. It's just one area I missed because it was covered by uh, by the lights and the uh, the window supports, the windshield supports. So anyway, we got that done. Now we can start cleaning this one up. And it's really quite simple. Uh, I'm not even going to keep those bolts. I'm just removing the loops that add detail. Go, I don't need those. At the top, I don't need that. And I don't need those either. Connect those just to tidy things up. Yeah, now this is a little bit more difficult. Most, a lot of new people to this normal map baking would leave it at that, but it's actually not enough since uh, the silhouette is actually also changed by the turbo smooth, as as you might have noticed before, and that's the reason I'm uh, tweaking the low poly cage to sit more flush with the high poly. This looks a little bit too big, so I have to scale it so it fits better. Uh, yeah, I think that, that almost looks like a... This isn't perfect yet. It's a bit tough to to move them like that. Yeah, and I'm also making sure I don't have too much polygon space um, extruded into the inside of the car. Reason for that is you're just wasting texture space if you do that. Just use the the bare minimum of intersecting um, surface as possible. There we go. Yeah, move those a little bit. And obviously they need to be attached in some sort of way. Hence I'm creating a little uh, sort of hinge bolt. And the reason for these uh, long, 
call them, uh, what I call these, uh, tubes that run from the, the lights to the uh, windshield supports. It's just uh, for a stronger, stronger construction. That, as I mentioned before, they look cool. Alright, let's see. Duplicate them. Eight thousand nine hundred and thirty-eight. Just a little bit more than before. Yeah, for these wheels. To tweak them a little bit more, also. If I want a realistic construction, they can't intersect into each other, so I need to offset their bases a little bit so I get this sort of effect. And I need to select every other one of these spokes. There we go, and do the same sort of thing here. Move them a bit also. It just looks more interesting if they all have a little offset uh, compared to each other. And then I'm adding another pulley on top, so that I can slightly rotate them there we go that looks better also oh needs a little bit more tweaking hmm yeah well, I probably not working like that so I'm just gonna leave it at that I should have looked at rev there to be sure but whatever things need to move forward Okay. Um, got my windshield there. All right. Another one of the important meshes to bake normals from will be the uh, those indicator lights and the rear lights as well. They're sh they'll be sharing the same mesh, so uh, model a really nice looking high poly for that. So, a uh, really nice looking high poly, so I need to create a decent low poly as well. It's not really difficult. So there we go. Something like that. Uh, there's my first part. As you notice, that was extremely easy to create. I need to do the same for the uh, that other bit. Yeah, and, uh, I'm gonna have to manually align them to the center of that mesh. See, I'm using the the intersection patterns to judge how uh, how it's sitting. And here I'm uh, aligning things on the go, just to make sure it's okay. Like that, and something like that. Yeah, that should do just fine for the low point. I might even reduce it in in detail a little bit more. So, uh, just using bevel all the time and checking how uh, the geometry intersects so I can uh, tell if I'm doing all right. Okay.
Now the problem I'm seeing here is uh, I'm using quite a bit of geometry for this part. I might have to optimize that slightly, but if necessary we'll get back to that later. Uh, most important thing here is just the, um, the silhouette, and the silhouette looks good, so... Yeah, using connect. I'm just doing that. Uh, it's a bit of an obsession, but I want to keep things in uh, in quads, and don't trust uh, on end gons too much. You really don't have to do that, I think, but I'm doing it anyway. So yeah, as I said. I need to optimize a little bit. So what I'm doing here is, first of all, it's important that you have an even number uh, for the number of segments for these parts. And I'm selecting every two vertices and welding them together so that it sort of locally loses detail. And nobody will ever tell because it's such a small part. I think I can do the same thing at the top and maybe even at the, uh, at the bottom. So... Uh, Just going to weld these as well. Select every two. There we go, that looks better. Oh. That was a nice little trick to reduce poly count on uh, objects that use a lot of cylindrical shapes. Uh, these don't exactly look like they're aligned correctly. Yeah, what I'm doing is I'm aligning the pivot of the low poly exactly to the high poly because apparently that wasn't the case. Oh, it's, it's actually normal if I start from a different primitive. and But that just allows me to uh, exactly align the low poly meshes to the high poly parts. I'm just checking if, I, if I'm definitely sure that it looks right because these look offset a little bit. It's always possible that it happens, but hey. Now, to be honest, also, this doesn't really matter if I align every instance of them of the low poly to the high poly, since I'll be on, I'll only be baking from one of them. But uh, I could just do it manually. But then again, I just want to work correctly, so I'm doing it like this. Anyway, we're almost there for this part of the video. Uh, see you in the next part where we'll be doing the engine.